You may not know our next guest by name, but if you've been around town lately to a lot of local businesses, you may recognize her art. And she is generating quite a bit of buzz at the moment. And the best part is she has no formal training. I've heard her say it herself. Nancy Ness joins us this after or this morning, actually, to talk a little bit about what inspires this beautiful art. And I have heard you say that you didn't even know you were going to become this popular artist. So let's go back to when uh, you realized you could create something pretty amazing. Yeah, actually, the beginning of my career, it was kind of an accident in a way. I had an old painting and I painted over it. I was proud of it. I posted it to social media and somebody offered to buy it almost immediately. Wow. And I started uh, giving out paintings as gifts and posting them to social media and almost immediately I started getting commission work and things just have snowballed from there. Well, I feel like when you have that creative, you know, gene, you just have it. Uh, can you think back to your childhood and maybe what you did before this and it probably makes sense that you were already creating things? It does. You know, I started cutting hair and doing uh, makeup for special events when I was about 14 years old. And after that, I did go to cosmetology school and worked as a makeup artist and cosmetologist for many years. I always dabbled into paint, but it wasn't until about four years ago that I started getting serious about painting. And like I mentioned right away, your pieces are actually up in some businesses that people may not even realize are your pieces. So where, where are your pieces and how did you already establish, you know, this growing business? Well, it's interesting. I've um, done a lot of work with Epic companies locally here in the Valley and in Jamestown. So I have some pieces that are at the Lights on Cheyenne and um, Pioneer Place in downtown West Fargo, University of Jamestown, and um, Sanctuary Events Center. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your style and uh, what inspires you and, and what do you use? What kind of art, what kind of paint? paintings are these? I mainly use acrylic paint and my style is non-objective which means there isn't really an object there's not something specific to look at in the painting and um, yeah like I said I use mostly heavy bodied acrylic there's often a lot of texture on my pieces. Something that I find very cool about your pieces as well I hope you don't mind sharing you name your pieces can you tell us a little bit about that process? I do. I name all of my pieces after people in my life, you know, family members. I have 39 first cousins, so I have a large family who's been very supportive of my art career so far. So I name a lot of them after my family members. I've done like a college series where I named a bunch of different pieces after my friends from college. So it's just different people in my life who inspired me. And sometimes I know before I start what the name is going to be. Sometimes I know when it's over. It just kind of is a feeling that comes to me. Okay, well, let's uh, start with the piece behind you. Does that one have a name? And uh, tell us a little bit about the person who inspired it. It does. This piece is called James. And James is going to UJ Place on the University of Jamestown campus. James was my grandfather Harold's brother. And he lived in Jamestown for many years. So this one's named after my great uncle James. And I don't know if we have the picture, but I know I've brought it up talking about you in the past. You did a piece, a very large piece, that you named after your grandfather. I did, yes, Harold. He was actually just hung yesterday at Harold Newman Arena at the University of Jamestown campus. Now, and I say it's large. Talk, you know, the actual numbers. This is a very large piece, and it took you a while to put together. It did. Um, that piece started out eight feet by eight feet. And we ran into a little snag with the openings of the door. So we had to cut it down to seven and a half feet by eight feet. I love that. So when you look at that piece, do you think of your grandfather? I do. And I, I thought of him pretty much the whole time I was working on it. It was, it was a cathartic process. Well, I love that. How many pieces have you done to that scale? I, that would, I would imagine be one of your largest, but uh, several pieces that I have seen are, are quite big. Yeah, yeah, I've probably done about 15 that are over six feet. So I like, you know, I kind of think bigger is better in a way where I like to go big with my paintings. I think it makes 
a nice statement and can really anchor down a large wall. Um, but it, it takes some ingenuity with the building of the frames. My husband builds all my frames for me and then we stretch the canvas together and we have a trailer that we need to actually transport these pieces. Well, Nancy, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about where people can find your art, uh, your connection to the local art community as well. So stay with us. <music> 